Uh, hello, everyone. Like you just heard, I'm going to talk about how to save and concurrent editing in Drupal 8. Um, my name is Christo Chonov. Uh, I am originally from Bulgaria, uh, but I currently work and live in Germany. Uh, I'm senior software engineer and uh, additionally also an official Drupal 8 core entity API maintainer. Uh, I am author and or maintainer of several Drupal modules, Drupal 8 modules, like autosave form, uh, conflict, the 2.x branch, uh, prefetch cache, widget on demand, entity reference inline. Uh, I work for a Frankfurt-based company in Germany, uh, Biologist Genetic Information Management. Uh, we are not the we are not a Drupal agency. We build our own product. Uh, it's a medical product, uh, even already certified as a medical device. Uh, some interesting Drupal facts. Uh, we are as of today at number at the place 18 in the Drupal marketplace and different dashboards for contributions. We are one of the two, respectfully three, end users in the top 30 corporate contributors for Drupal 8, as made by a survey from Dries. Uh, we are hiring, if you are interested. <laughs> uh, so uh, let's talk about first about autosave, uh, the autosave form module. Um, I think everybody knows what the tasks of autosave are, and that's to continuously save how to save, persist, in a way, the state of the form and the user input. Um, the form, the module itself, it's pretty simple. You just install it and it works out of the box. Uh, it has several configurable options, uh, like uh, configuring the interval, how often how to save will be triggered. And you could also enable it or disable it for specific entity types and bundles. Uh, currently, we support only content entity forms. Uh, we haven't implemented it for config entity forms. Uh, not because it's not possible, because just uh, we wanted to concentrate on content entity forms. But it's easy to build it also for config entity forms. Uh, just some basics. Uh, I'm not going to go into details. Uh, it's just that you know that it's not that easy to implement it. There were some difficulties. Uh, we have to basically bypass everything that Drupal does, at least the form API. So therefore, we overwrite, we decorate the form builder in order to speed up autosave submissions to make them like in a couple of milliseconds uh, instead of going through all the process of submitting a regular form. Uh, we have to prevent all the form validation, the entity validation, because the form might not be complete, might not be correct. Uh, all kind of hook invocations, because you never know what is in custom code or even in country code or core code. Uh, and in that way, we want to prevent any changes made to the form in any automatic way. Uh, the also safe states, uh, they are pre-user. It's like a draft for a user. It's private to that user that's currently working on a specific entity form. Uh, and new states will be created only when there has been a change. So it means I work on a form. Um, I pause my working. The autosave intervals get triggered, but no new states will be created if I don't continuously work on the form. Um, that makes it possible to implement back and forward functionality so that you can through your changes in a form. It can be built on top of it. We haven't done that yet. Um, the module itself uh, behaves differently depending on whether the conflict module that I will present later is enabled or not. Just in two words, uh, when the conflict module is not enabled, then it's like the just standard Drupal functionality. Uh, when you make changes to a form, and in the meanwhile, other another user uh, edits the same form and saves, then uh, your autosave states will be deleted, and your autosave will be discontinued, you, and the user will be informed about that. The reason is that even if we continue persisting the changes, you can edit the form, but the end you are not going to be able to save, and that's why we kind of uh, um, inform the user what's going to happen. Uh, if the conflict module is enabled, 
only the autosave states of the current user for the current form that is being submitted are going to be deleted because after you submit the form, you don't need the autosave states anymore. But otherwise, if the conflict model is there and there are submissions from other users, at the end you get the opportunity to solve conflicts if there are any. We'll go to that later. So that was just a brief uh, overview of autosave form. Uh, I'm just going to show you a little bit demonstration. A little bit hardcore. I'm doing live presentation. It's not recorded. So uh, I've just enabled the module and uh, I'm logging in the Umami dis uh, distribution of Drupal uh, installation profile. And now I'm on the pro uh, edit page of a form and you see it in the right corner down that autosave states are being triggered. Usually every 60 seconds, but I've configured it now to be every five seconds in order for you to, to, to see the difference. So for example, I changed the preparation time here from one minute to 100 minutes, and uh, I changed the cooking time from 21 to 50 minutes. Then I just wait for the autosave submission, and then I can leave the form, for example, and when I return to the form at some later point, then I get the pop-up that they autosave states for that form, and I can either resume where I've left, or I can discard all the changes. If I resume, then the form will be rebuilt for me with the, my last changes, and you see that the preparation time is here, and uh, the cooking time is as well preserved. So uh, what happens when uh, somebody else uh, saves in the meanwhile, for example? Now, it's a private mode. Another user is locked in here. I just go again here. That's the same entity form. And it's even sufficient to just save without changes because we currently, without the conflict module, basically just with autosave, we can detect if there are any conflicts. So I save here. Uh, and then I go to the other form. And when autosave runs, and then the message comes that, uh, the form has been edited in the meanwhile, and therefore autosave uh, will be deactivated, and uh, uh, I just have to start over. So that's how it works without the um, conflict module. And like you see, there are no new autosave submissions. You can continue editing the form, but when you submit it, then there will be like the Drupal constraint that's usually there, that uh, the entity change constraint validator that the form uh, the content has been edited in the meanwhile. So, standard Drupal behavior. Uh, so, let's go back to the presentation. Uh, some autosave form limitations. Currently, by default, it works only for entity forms defined through the directive entity form. Uh, the directives controller and form aren't supported yet, even if behind them you are presenting uh, an entity form. The reason for that is that we don't really uh, know what you've implemented. And uh, in order to not break stuff, there might be multiple entity forms on the page. And if how to say forms, for which one should we uh, uh, make the submission? It's a little bit harder for such stuff, and we didn't have the use case yet, and that's why we haven't thought about it. But that are the less use cases, I guess. Um, some things that have been planned for the future and they are currently being discussed are like uh, we want to make use of the local storage in the browser in order to um, make it possible to have autosave when there is no active internet connection or the connection is continuously interrupting when you are on a train trip. Uh, also, it will conserve your bandwidth and the server processing time if you have uh, a high traffic side. So uh, maybe we can do it like this, that we make a couple of autosave submissions in the browser, and then in batches we send them all together to the server at once, and not every couple of seconds. Um, Something that is being currently discussed in the community as well is saving how to save states as forward revisions. Uh, something like what content moderation is doing. However, there are technical limitations about not no constraints in the database because you not you don't have always a complete form. Uh, or 
what happens with inline references. So like you have inline nested forms and you've created a new one, how do you save that inline entity? You don't have an entity yet, not saved entity. And you don't necessarily want to create a new entity because it hasn't been created yet. Or what about non-revisionable entity types? So there is still discussion. Uh, there is no decision yet, uh, but that are some of the technical limitations that I wanted to show you. Uh, it's being considered maybe for core inclusion, at another form of the module, that module, there is just no talk I've proposed that module in the current form, uh, in the current state, and uh, we'll see what happens. We are going to talk further about it with the community. Uh, that's the issue, that's the number of the issue, and uh, if you're interested, uh, you can post your thoughts there. They are very welcome and will be very helpful. And if you have any ideas and requests, please post them on the issue queue or contact me directly, whatever you prefer. So, uh, the next in the session is uh, the conflict module, the 2.x branch. Uh, it's different than the 1.x, completely different, and I'm the maintainer only of 2.x and responsible for it. Uh, so, the conflict module was built basically for concurrent editing, but uh, nowadays it can go further beyond. I'll come to that later. Uh, so the idea was to make concurrent editing of uh, entities possible, like the use case that I've showed on the autosave form, that I had two users working on the same form, and the one saves, and then the other one cannot save, and we wanted to make it possible that both can save at some point. Uh, it was implemented with the idea to support both revisionable and not, revision, not non-revisionable entity types. Uh, like with the case with uh, uh, autosave, we haven't implemented it for config entity types because it's just, it wasn't relevant for us, but it's easy to add support for it. Uh, just a brief overview about the internals. Um, it's basically built um, as an entity uh, handler. Uh, and works uh, as an entity builder when the ent uh, entity form is being submitted and the entity uh, is being prepared, built. Uh, we have also a pub subsystem, event-based, uh, for conflict discovery and uh, for conflict resolution. Uh, that's something that uh, just came in recently. Uh, we've changed the original approach. Uh, I had. Uh, couple of talks with Philip Melap from Amazi Labs. And uh, thanks to that discussion that I had with him, we decided for switching the approach and making it more flexible by introducing an event system for conflict detection and resolution. Uh, so when we compare to detect conflicts, we do a three-way comparison. And for that, we need the entity that has been used to initially build the form, the current entity that's been generated from the user input, and the entity that's uh, currently stored in the storage, the newest version of it. Like, for example, another user already saved during our form session. Uh, the conflict discovery and resolution here is built through two uh, events that are being uh, dispatched. The first one that we trigger is the entity conflict discovery event. Uh, it basically has the three entities that I've mentioned, and they are named in that case left, right, and base. Uh, base is like the initial, the initial entity, it's the parent of the two other entities, the left and the right, the left being the one that I'm currently editing, and the right being the one from the, the newest version of the storage. We also pass a, a context uh, uh, as a parameter back so that you can influence your custom uh, or core contrib uh, um, event, um, event subscribers. During that phase, a list of conflicting properties will be generated. After we've generated that list, we pass it together with a result entity in which we solve the conflict to another event, the entity conflict resolution event, and when, we resolve, when a conflict is resolved, then it gets removed out of the list. If it cannot be resolved, then it stays in the list. Um, we currently offer some auto-merge strategies. Uh, 
for example, fields that are not enabled in the current form are going to be uh, transferred from the uh, newest version of the entity because the current user basically cannot uh, change them and we just copy them over. It's not a change made by the current user. Uh, fields that the current user doesn't have access to, it's basically like if that fields are not part of the current form. And uh, also translatable fields from other translations, just basically everything that the current user cannot currently change. We are copying it just over, as well as the whole entity metadata so that we can overcome all the core constraints which are going to prevent us from saving. And also, if a field is changed only in the current form or in the newest version of the entity, then we merge those changes as well because that are not conflicts. Conflicts are changes that are made on the same property in uh, the current entity and in the newest version of the storage. Uh, the conflict uh, entity handler is the one that controls everything and starts the whole process. If you want to, you can uh, register your own on your entity type by extending from the provided one, uh, or you can, uh, you can swap it in the hook entity type author. By implementing that hook, you can swap the, the handler. Mm. So I told you that we, during the second phase of the event system, we resolve conflicts automatically, but it might happen that we are not able to resolve all conflicts. In that case, uh, we need to provide the user with a way to manually resolve that conflict. Uh, we thought uh, and implemented partly two approaches. The one is dialogue based and the other one is inline based. Uh, the inline based is mainly for just regular entity forms, simple entities, only one entity, and then you see the conflict, the conflicting properties in line together with the, uh, with the field on the form. And the dialogue based is told about uh, nested in line forms where you have a lot of entities like with paragraphs, for example, uh, and then you can switch from one to the another entity like in a pop-up window so that you can concentrate on every single entity in the form. Uh, the integration with nested inline modules have been uh, tested only with our custom already contrib module, uh, not perfectly ready uh, for contrib, but still it's already published entity reference inline. So it's like paragraphs, but you don't necessarily need paragraph entities. You can use all kinds of entities. Uh, so, and we are currently considering uh, how exactly to make it look beautiful. Uh, make it more usable. Uh, unfortunately, I'm not a, a user architect, and if there is someone among you, then it will be really nice if you would uh, help us. Uh, so I'm going to show just a little demonstration of how the conflict module works, also together with, uh, um, with autosave. For that, I have first to enable it. So then I go on the edit page of the one entity, and then in the other session, maybe I can place them together. The windows, I don't know. OK, it looks good, I think. And then uh, on the one side, I change, for example, the preparation time now for to 10 minutes. And in order to make a conflict, I'll change it here to 15 minutes. Let's make a couple more changes. Uh, the cooking time, changing it to 59 and here to 19. And making change here, only here the change like five, so that we see that here there will be no conflict. And here making another change, medium. So, and now I'm just going to uh, save one of the forms. And we will see that the autosave won't get deactivated, disabled on the other form. Uh, so I've just saved, and like you see here, autosave continues. So I'm able to further edit the form. Uh, and at some point, I can make some more changes if I want to, and then I want to save the form. 
And what happens is instead of getting the validation error, the standard validation error from Drupal, I get the opportunity to resolve the conflicts or to just discard them and uh, start all over again. If I decide to resolve the conflicts, then you already see the form. We have this view here that shows the, um, my current version of the changes, the initial version where I've started. So that's basically the parent of the changes both on my side and on the server side. And then we also see the, uh, what's on the server. So I have to accept to, uh, that I've considered that conflict. And considering that view, I can probably change. For example, I think, OK, cooking time, it's not 19 minutes. Uh, it's correct. It's actually 59 minutes. Then I just take it. Unfortunately, currently, it's, it's like a manual step. Maybe we should make it in a different way so that it's much more attractive to the user. Uh, but for that, I will need your help. <laughs> uh, so, and then I can just save the entity. And there, we have all the changes here. And we have the preparation time and the cooking time and everything has been merged. And like I told you, there were some few fields that I've changed on the one and on the other. There were no conflicts there. They have been merged. So, um, something that I'm currently still experimenting with is uh, to uh, make it possible to merge like a lot of uh, big text areas uh, where you're writing like I don't know a blog post and it's a bigger text and. Uh, if there are multiple authors working on the same page, then you kind of want to support them by in a way of merging it instead of showing just the versions. It might get too big, the text. So there is this uh, PHP library that, uh, or jQuery uh, JavaScript library that we might use for PHP. Uh, and it just highlights uh, the changes. Looks like this. So that's something that uh, has been proposed for the module and I'm currently experimenting with, like I told you. So uh, another thing is that it's like out of save. It's also considered, or some parts of it are being considered for uh, core inclusion. Uh, there is already a patch made of the event system from the 2.x branch for the core. And uh, we will see what happens if you're interested into that's the number of the issue, uh, and if you want to, you can uh, work with us on it. So that's pretty much everything. Uh, it's made as simple as possible and as less configuration as possible so that everything works out of the box. Uh, I hope if you, that you've enjoyed it, and if you have any questions, now is the time, or you can find me later. If you have any questions, just raise your hand. There and are ask no them. questions in the Slido, but does anyone have a question right now for Christo? Okay, I guess that's it then. If you happen to, you know, think of a question later, you can find Christo. He will be there tomorrow too. Uh, thank you, Christo. Thank you for having me.